Audiences in Korea nowadays have become more and more accustomed to seeing expatriates in Korean television shows and films, especially speaking Korean, as the nation becomes more multicultural. A recent example of this is a film we talked about on our movie spotlight segment recently called Jazzy Misfits. U.S. national actor Terrace Brown plays the role of someone who grew up in Korea in the film, but doesn't speak any English. To tell us more about that and his career, I'm delighted to say that Terrace now joins us in the studio for this week's A Touch Base in Seoul. Thank you for being with us today. Oh, thank you for having me. Okay, so for our listeners, can you introduce yourself in your own words and tell us what you do? Sure. My name is Terrace Brown. I'm from the U.S. Originally, I grew up in New York, and I never really knew about Korea per se until I went to college and mm. I met some friends and I wanted to visit. One day, so I ended up coming as an exchange student, and then I fell in love. And one day, I met the president of an entertainment company, and he thought I was talented, and that's how I got in, and that's sort of how I started doing this type of work. Okay, so you came to Korea ten years ago, was it? Yeah, it's about ten years. Mm. First, as an exchange student, as an undergrad, and then I came again as a graduate student, as an exchange student, and then. I felt like I had learned Korean for a long time, and I didn't want to lose it. So I graduated, and then I came back, and I've been here ever since. Okay, so you first studied Korean at graduate, at uh, sorry, at university, undergrad, undergrad. Yeah, yeah. undergrad. Uh, how was that? I mean, how did you decide to do that? Well, when I was an undergrad in New York, I actually started studying um, biomed and. Chemistry wasn't my strong point, okay. and I ended up taking a couple of linguistic classes. Mm. And I met some Korean exchange students, mm. and I don't know, just really quickly, I became interested in Korean culture. Maybe because I didn't know much about it; it was mm. just all fresh and new. So I decided for my junior year, I wanted to go somewhere, and because I had those friends, I said, "Why not? Let's go to Korea." Then I came, and I loved it, and I was picking up the language pretty quickly, and. I don't know. Everything just like sort of fell into place for me. If anyone has seen you on the TV or in mm -hmm. films, they'll know how good your Korean is as well. How did you get so good at it? Ah, that's such a hard <laughs> thing to answer. <laughs> but I obviously I kept studying. I tried to hang out with Korean people as much mm. as I could, and it is a little difficult, especially when you speak English, because so many Koreans do speak English. So I tried not to use it as much as I could, and I was a big drama head when I first came. I watched dramas all the time, and I tried to like repeat what they said mm -hmm. and try to like fix any weird pronunciations that I had. And mm. over time, it just got better and better. And I guess that's where I am today. Right, and your Korean is sounds so fluent and so natural Thank as you. well. I guess from all those uh, Korean dramas. When you first came to Korea, what mm -hmm. did you do uh, after you became after you uh, graduated? Well, after I graduated, I started doing some translations because I had to make money to survive. <laughs> so and then, how did you get into the uh, entertainment? You said you met someone, right? So when I was an exchange student in graduate school, we had to do an internship, mm. and that was like part of our program. So I ended up doing an internship at this company called Talk to Me in Korean, and they they were very popular among like foreigners who were trying to learn Korean. Mm -hmm. And I ended up working there for a year and. At that company, they make a lot of like videos that go. It's on about the... teaching Korean right, to foreigners, to foreigners. Right. Yeah. and they make a lot of videos. And when I was filming those videos, I think that's where I got the bug. I was like, "Oh, I like being on camera." Mm -mm. And so when I came back, one of the people who worked there introduced me to somebody who was doing entertainment, and I got to film this short video. And I guess it took off, and like people noticed it. So. Mm. I kept trying to find ways to get into the entertainment industry, and eventually I met the president of my company now, mm. and then I came in, and I've, ever since then, I've been doing entertainment. As I said in the introdu introduction, we are in Korea getting more used to seeing right. foreign people, especially speaking Korean on TV and in mm -hmm. cinema. Do you feel those kind of opportunities have been growing in the last couple of years? Um, I think yes and no. I want to say yes that a lot more foreign talent is being used in Korean television and mm. movies but I feel like your selling point can't be just speaking Korean anymore mm. a lot of 
in the past, I think it had a, a very like cool factor if a foreigner spoke Korean. But there's a lot of good Korean speaking mm. foreigners nowadays, yeah, so you have to like work on other skills. For example, singing or acting skills, and especially in the acting realm, there's limited amount of roles that foreigners can do. So that's mm. a little unfortunate. But I think people are noticing us and they're trying to create more roles for us. So that's positive, I guess. Right, and you've managed to land yourself in a role in a new movie called mm-hmm. Jazzy Misfits, and uh, where you play someone who's meant to be Korean, who's yes. I mean, who's grown up in Korea, whose nationality is Korean, yes. and cannot speak any English. Mm-hmm. How was that experience? It was, I want to say, one of the toughest experiences in my life, and mm. on the same note, just as rewarding because I had to be perfect, and mm. it was a lot of pressure I put on myself, but. Once I finished, I felt so rewarded, mm. and everybody around me was very nice. They always helped me. If I said something weird, they were like, oh, that doesn't sound native, because mm. it wasn't just that I had to be good. I had to like fool the audience into thinking that I grew up here, Mm-mm. so that was just a whole other challenge, and I didn't want to mess up the movie for anybody else, but it was so cool just being on camera and going to different sets, doing these different things, memorizing lines. Um, I don't know. I really enjoyed it, and... Right now it's in theaters and people are seeming to like it. So Mm. hopefully I can continue to do it. Was there any particular scene or line that really caught you? Um, So there is a scene where, don't want to like ruin anything for the movie for you, but (laughs) I have to speak to a person who only speaks English Mm. and pretend that I can't speak English. Right, okay. (laughs) So that's a very funny scene because uh, clearly I speak English, but Mm. I have to pretend that I don't know Korean, Mm. I mean English, to Mm. this girl. And it is, for me, it was the funniest scene to film. Right, right, sure. To pretend that you don't speak your own language and speak another language. That's, I'm not sure I could do that. (laughs) It was very tough. Yeah, and you said the response has been very good. Yeah, actually, the review score, I would say, is on the higher side. Mm. And I know now because of corona, not many people can go to the theaters, but the people who have gone, most of them seem to enjoy the movie. And I think maybe in two weeks or so, it'll be released onto maybe television companies or online platforms. So hopefully more people can see it. And yeah, I just hope more people love it. I understand you're also part of a performance team called Hangul mm-hmm. with some fellow settlers of Korea. Can you tell us a bit more about that? Because as you said, you have to be multi-talented. You sing as well. I try. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, we have this team called Hangul and mm. it basically is a group of people in my company who love music. And we all love Korea, of course. And mm. we're trying to spread Korean music to more people on the outside so normally what we do is we'll take a song and if in my case I'd sing the first half in Korean and the second half in English Mm. we have a singer from Chile and she will sing the first half in Korean the second half in Spanish so wherever you're from Mm -mm. we usually switch it up like that and we try to take famous Korean songs or like drama OSTs, those types of songs that people might know already and just sing it in their language so that it they can get more of a connection. So we we just try to promote Korean culture by going to different events around Korea, especially where there are a lot of foreigners. As you said, Korea is becoming more multicultural over mm-hmm. the years and uh, we are used to seeing more uh, foreigners speaking excellent Korean do you think people's attitudes perhaps has changed to foreigners just speaking? When you speak Korean, for example, to a mm-hmm. Korean person, uh, do they still get as surprised as they used to? Or is it becoming more uh, normal now? Um, I want to say that people still are surprised mm-hmm. almost all the time. And there are s- still some people who will sort of want to insist on speaking English, mm-hmm. maybe because they don't have other opportunities to practice, which Mm. may be frustrating in a learner's perspective. But there are a lot more people who do speak it. So, like, if you go to a place like Itaewon or a place where you can see foreigners a lot, I feel Mm. like people are more accustomed to it. So it's just, like, every day. Mm. But there are still people who are surprised just because it's not something you interact with on a Mm. daily basis. Right, because uh, if, even though Korea is becoming more multicultural, the population of the foreign popul- uh, population is still very small. Right, right. We're still very uh, uh, homogenous society here in Korea. Do you think, though, p- 
perhaps attitudes have changed towards uh, foreigners over the last few years? Um, yes. Um, I think it is getting more and more positive. Um, there have been a lot of like famous shows with foreigners on it, so I mm. think they're sort of portraying a more positive light. Mm. And people seem to respond well to hearing like different opinions, especially like that show a while back, uh, like Pijong Sam Hedam. It was mm-hmm. just a lot of different opinions that Koreans may not have been able to hear before. So mm-hmm. I think it was interesting to them. And they, I think opinions are changing slowly, especially the younger generation. I feel like the older generation may still not be able to communicate as much with younger people. So they may still look at you differently a little bit or be more curious. But in general, I see shows trying to use more people, people being more open to different cultures. Mm. And I think everything is heading in the right direction. Yeah, definitely. I feel that way mm-hmm. too as well. Just before we go as well, what are your goals for the future then? What's the next on the horizon for you? Well, um, if the reaction to this movie continues to go well, I hope that more roles will open up, especially for foreigners to be able to do with, you know, like a decent amount of size so that people can remember them. Um, yeah, I just hope that more directors will make more roles for foreigners and I hope to continue to be in movies. Um, one day if Hollywood wants to call me, that's fine. <laughs> that's, that's what I was going to ask next. Are you going to stay in Korea or if Hollywood call, comes calling, would you go? I plan on staying in Korea, mm. but I mean, if Hollywood wants me for a movie, I'll go and then I'll come back. It's fine. Sure, sure. <laughs> well, as a uh, Someone in Korea, I love seeing you on TV speaking Korean and as well, and, and you're singing as well, your wonderful voice. So thank you. Thank I would you. like to see you stay in Korea and see you on Korean TV more. But uh, that's uh, if Hollywood comes calling, you should definitely go. <laughs> We've been speaking to actor Terrace Brown. Thank you for coming today and sharing your story with us. Oh, thank you for having me.